Have you ever heard of a 500 ton cargo ship driving on a viaduct? Well, it happened in China. The viaduct built for cargo ships shown in this video is part of a 471 million US dollar mega project on the Wu River in Yuqing County, Guizhou Province. This mega project is called the Gopitan Hydropower Station Navigation Project and it's built to help get ships over the Gopitan Hydropower Dam. Gopitan Hydropower Station is the fifth stage of cascade development in the Wu River Basin. It is 137 kilometers downstream of Wujiangdu Hydropower Station and 455 kilometers upstream of Fuling District of Chongqing City, where the Wu River merges into the Yangtze River. The main task of the hydropower station is to generate electricity. Considering shipping, flood control, and other purposes, it sums up to an investment of $2.17 billion. The total reservoir capacity is 6,454 million cubic meters, with a normal storage level of 630 meters. The power station officially started construction in November of 2003 and was put into operation in December 2009. The 225 meter high double curved concrete arch dam of the power station cuts off the navigation channel of the Wu River. The Gopitan navigation project is mainly composed of an upstream and downstream approach channels, three vertical boat lifts, and two intermediate channels, with a total length of 2,305.7 meters. The infrastructure is classified as Class 4, and its designed service lifespan is 100 years. The navigation project is located on the left bank of the reservoir. The upstream approach channel is 454 meters long, and the first intermediate channel has a navigable water level of 637 meters and a total length of 979.5 meters, of which the tunnel is 335 meters long. The aqueduct segment is 467 meters long, and the rest is open channel. The second intermediate channel has a navigable water level of 510 meters and a total length of 386.4 meters, of which the length of the aqueduct is 102 meters. The length of the downstream approach channel is 200 meters. Let's take an example of a ship going downstream to illustrate the process of vessels going over the dam. The vessel enters the upstream approach channel from the reservoir area. The first stage boat lift will raise the vessel to the first intermediate channel, and the vessel will navigate to the second stage boat lift, which then lowers the vessel to the second intermediate channel. The vessel then navigates to the third stage boat lift, and is lowered to the downstream approach channel, where the vessel drives out into the regular downstream channel. If the vessel is going upstream, the process is reversed. The maximum lifting heights of the first, second, and third stage lifts are 47 meters, 127 meters, and 79 meters respectively, of which the second stage lift is the largest vertical boat lift in the world. The total hydraulic head is around 199 meters. On June 22nd, a navigational test was conducted for the Gopitan Navigation Project. The 500-ton standard ship, Avionics No. 1, entered from under the dam and into the Gopitan Reservoir through the three-stage boat lifts and two intermediate channels. Afterwards, the authorities announced that the Gopitan Navigational Project was officially put into trial operation. On November 17th, a fleet of 14 ships loaded with phosphate ore arrived at the Gopitan Hydroelectric Station and lined up to pass the dam and head to the Fuling District. Immediately afterwards, China's official media reported the event, claiming that the navigation project at Gopitan has been a major success. A number of mainland media outlets reported it, and the 50 Cent Army and Little Pinks have followed the trend of promoting China's strength in high level of infrastructure construction. However, many insiders have different views on this project. They believe that the navigation project was a huge investment, but not practical, and the social and economic benefits are not obvious. Let's first look at the current state of navigation on the Wu River and the authorities' forecast of future cargo traffic, and then analyze whether there was a need to build the project. At present, 10 hydroelectric power stations have been built on the Wu River, and another station, Bai Ma, is under construction. That means 11 power stations have divided the river into several sections. Let's take a look at the table for details. According to the government-approved Environmental Impact Assessment Report on the Navigable Structures at Gopitan Hydropower Station, 
the total freight volume of the Wu River in Guizhou Province in 2005 was 478,100 tons, mostly for short-distance transportation within the province, and mainly based on the Sulin Hydropower Station, 88 kilometers downstream of Gopitan. Before 2010, there was basically no cargo volume on the Wu River at the Gopitan Hydropower Station section. And in 2015, the Wu River carried 920,000 tons of cargo and 7.39 million passengers, with an average distance of 17 kilometers. Only one boat crossed the belt lift at the Yinpan Hydropower Station on the Wu River, making two to three round trips per month. The Pengtui infrastructure also sees two to three round trips per month, and the boat trips are for small vessels such as fish carriers. In the assessment report, it is stated that after the development of the navigational project, the waterway conditions will be improved, and the volume of water transportation on the Wu River is expected to increase significantly. According to the forecast, the estimated overdam traffic at the Gopitan Hydropower Station in 2020 is 950,000 tons, including 840,000 tons downstream, and the overdam traffic in 2030 is 1.43 million tons. Including 1.25 million tons downstream, it is still very difficult to predict how much cargo will pass through the various hydropower stations on the Wu River. In China, as long as the leaders decide that the project must be built, the feasibility study report must also conclude that the project is feasible. Therefore, there is no solid basis for the EIA report to predict the annual volume of goods that will cross the dam. Moreover, even if 1.43 million tons of cargo do pass through the dam each year, it is still a question of whether it's worth spending 471 million dollars to build a navigable project for this amount of cargo. Yao Yusheng, deputy secretary of the expert committee of the Minister of Transportation and Communications, pointed out in his article "Study on the Impact of the Wu River Hydropower Development on Shipping and Countermeasures." That, according to the Guizhou Provincial Administration of Navigation, the cost per ton per kilometer of cargo in the Wu River region is about eight cents for road, five cents for rail, and two cents for water transportation. The total shipping mileage from the Wujiangdu Hydropower Station, located 139 kilometers upstream of the Gopitan, to Fuling, where the Wu River merges into the Yangtze River, is 594 kilometers. The cargoes transported are mainly coal, timber, cement, and metal ores. The destination is usually Fuling or the middle and lower reaches of the Yangtze River. Of course, there are highways and railroads available for the transportation of goods from Wujiangdu to Fuling. The mileage of freeway is 370 kilometers, and the mileage of railroad is about 360 kilometers. If 1.43 million tons of cargo is transported between Wujiangdu and Fuling, the road transportation cost is about 41.5 million dollars, and the rail transportation cost is about 24.2 million dollars. The construction investment and operation cost of the road and rail are all a part of the transportation cost, excluding the cost of the cargo ship passing through the six hydroelectric dams, including Gopitan. The water freight is approximately 13.3 million dollars. The current toll fees for the six navigation facilities are unknown. Based on the investment of 471 million dollars for the navigational project at Gopitan and a lifespan of 100 years, a profit of at least 4.7 million dollars per year will be required to recover the investment. Due to the information blackout policy of the Chinese government, we are unable to find out the actual construction costs and annual operating costs of the Gopitan navigation project. However, we were able to find information on labor costs online. The annual labor cost of the project is estimated to be over six hundred thirty thousand dollars, with a total of seventy-five management and operational staff. If we take into account the water transportation cost, the investment and operation costs of the six navigation projects, it is estimated that water transportation does not have more cost advantage than railroad transportation. In fact, as a state-owned enterprise, Wu Hydropower Company did not want to build this project, but the central government and the Guizhou provincial government insisted on promoting the construction of this project. In November of 2005, the Office of the National Development and Reform Commission of China issued a letter requesting that the construction plan approved by the state be seriously implemented. 
to ensure that the navigational facilities of the hydropower station at Gu Pitan are built simultaneously in accordance with the standards of a Class 4 channel and a 500 ton ship type. In 2012, the Guizhou Provincial Government's water transport planning for the Wujiang River required that the 406 kilometers from Wujiangdu Hydropower Station to Gongtan be a three level channel, and Gu Pitan is located in this section of the river. From October 16 to 19, 2007, the Guizhou Provincial Committee of the CPPCC organized an inspection delegation led by Zhou Daxin to inspect the construction of the power station and navigation project at Gopitan. At that time, the person in charge of the Gopitan hydropower station and navigation project raised three concerns and said that the navigation project should be delayed. One of the problems was that the project required heavy investment but the economic benefits after completion are not obvious. The person in charge said that the total investment of $471 million was calculated based on the price level at the end of 2006, and the construction cost should be more than $706 million, according to the price level in October 2007. However, the government inspection team asked the Gopitan power station team to be firm in their determination to build the navigation project. Regardless of how useful this mega project may be, it was completed and created six world superlatives. It is the world's first navigation infrastructure with a three-stage boat lift, the infrastructure with the world's largest navigable hydraulic head, the world's largest navigable infrastructure in terms of changes in water level, the world's highest single-stage boat lift, the world's largest and most powerful launch ship lift, and the world's largest navigation aqueduct, known as the Museum of Shiplets. Yao Yusheng, a navigation transportation expert, believes that the development of hydropower on the Wu River has had a negative impact on shipping, stating in his article that the hydropower stations on the main stream of the Wujiang River generally formulate power station dispatching and operation rules based on the water volume of the reservoir and the power demand of the regional power grid. The power station output is mostly operated by daily peak regulation, and the unsteady flow from the hydroelectric power station causes the water level under the dam to rise and fall, with large and frequent changes in the instantaneous rate of change. The design stipulates that the maximum allowable water depth deviation of the Gupitan ship lift chamber is plus or minus 0.1 meters, and plus or minus 0.15 meters for Silian and Chateau ship lift. This puts forward stringent requirements on the amplitude and rate of change of the downstream water level of the power station, making the unsteady flow formed by the discharge of the power station a restrictive factor for the safe and efficient operation of the ship lifts. When the above hydroelectric power station is generating a lot of power or in full production, the discharge flow of the power station will increase, and the water level of the river downstream the dam will skyrocket for a short time. This requires the operation vessels and anchored vessels along the line to adjust frequently according to the water level change, which brings safety hazards to the navigable vessels and anchored vessels in the river section. When the hydroelectric power station is generating little or no power, the downstream flow of the power station decreases and the water level of the river drops rapidly and the channel conditions deteriorate rapidly bringing safety hazards such as stranding, hitting the rocks, and even being forced to suspend the shipping. The unsteady flow prolongs the operating length of the ships and increases ship operating costs. Some netizens have commented that China's huge investment in the construction of such a mega-project is purely for fame, and essentially a huge waste of social resources. It is similar to the $19.7 billion Hong Kong Zhuhai Macau Bridge, commonly known as the Ghost Bridge, as it has very few vehicles. There are many more projects like this in China, and instead of building these cosmetic projects, it will be better to invest more in solving some civilian issues.